Buongiorno e buone feste, my soccer universe. We're gonna review uh, the last round before Christmas. We are at the halfway point of the Serie A season, which also means that I wanna give you, like I do for La Liga and the Premier League and the Bundesliga, you will get a kind of performance reviews in, in a way for every team to see how their season went. I produced some graphs. This will come, I think, on Christmas Day. They will come uh, quick and fast for you to enjoy while you're having your Christmas meal or whatever. Whenever you have to have the time, I think it's a little bit fun. Um, but in any case, um, I'm wearing Bologna, the at least statistically the big winner of the day because they had uh, of the match day because they had a rather unexpected win other than that as a milan fan i have to say this round went almost perfect yes would have went perfect if i was wearing torino uh today but yeah that's the one thing that did not happen but both milan clubs are now more or less clear up top i mean inter still more distance uh to milan than milan has to the rest of the pack but looking rather good for milan uh to get at least a second spot and maybe keep it up with inter I maintain at the moment Inter seem by far the best team in Italy, so uh, that also gotta be said. Jump in. Um, the first game did not happen, and it's a similar uh, scenario as we had at the beginning of last season, where uh, Salernitana had a COVID outbreak, was not allowed to travel, Serie A didn't kind of show whatever, so uh, the game did not happen, although Udine showed up, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know about any decision on that yet. I guess this will be another long uh, legal battle where it's not not clear what will happen. In any case, so for now, for me, the game does, is postponed, but let's see how it goes. Atalanta, rather disappointing, Neil Little Jenna, who just parked the bus. And Juve got a win against Cagliari. Again, help that you get uh, the goals early on. And I think Juve kind of getting now the drift and I don't think that Juve is out of it at all not for the title but I think Juve is a Champions League spot contender and then uh, we already had Sassuolo Bologna a game that was uh, kind of a little bit weird <laughs> in the sense that uh, Sassuolo controlled of course the early stages but against the run of play Orsolini just yanks it into uh, the roof of the, of the net. A really great goal. And then Hickey, uh, just before the half, um, also makes it 2-0. And it's all Bologna. And in case you didn't know, Sassuolo and Bologna are rather close together. So it's almost kind of a derby in a way. Although Sassuolo is such a small town that I wouldn't call it necessarily a derby. But, you know, uh, there's a regional rivalry. There were many Bologna fans there, there, there as well. Then uh, I think Bologna missed after the half a good chance for making a third. But then um, Sassuolo had a few chances as well. But in the end, it's a 3-0 after a horrible uh, play out uh, from the keeper uh, that allows Santander to make it 3-0 uh, win. That actually confirms kind of that Bologna is not that bad of a team. However, Sassuolo, uh, who have been pretty good as, as of late, that's a little blip. Uh, big win for Lazio over Venezia. I know that Venezia had a red card. Maybe that helped them. I didn't see much of, of the game. Uh, so a bit more of Roma. Some Sampdoria. Forget the first, first half. Second half. Sampdoria early on hit the uh, post. You know, must score this situation, I might say. Uh, Roma then were kind of really trying to break them down. And finally brought on the breakthrough. When Shomodorov in the 72nd uh, kind of willed it in. I mean, he... Took to took a shot was blocked and uh, took him in and then it goes in. However, the lead doesn't hold up for long and Gabbiadini gets an equalizer and then Roma again chasing and uh, the good result against Atalanta is almost immediately undone by a draw against Sampdoria, which will not get Roma any, 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 anywhere. Um, as I said, Inter get another win. It was only a one 0 against Torino, a game that I actually expected much higher. Scoreline, Dumfries uh, getting the goal in the 30th, um, where I think uh, for Alfred and Brozovic for him didn't touch it because uh, otherwise he would not have had uh, the nice um, uh, shot on goal. Torino early on had a few chances, then Inter really created loads of chances. And I said uh, Inter at the moment looks 
like the team to beat again which a uh, little bit surprising especially when you consider that at the beginning of the season everyone thought Inter to break away with all the stars gone but what Simon and Zagi has many has, has managed is there's a lot more flexibility and freedom in the interplay so uh, every player actually gets to play and then has fun doing so uh, and in an open league as Serie A has become now that uh, really plays dividends and I think it will take some time until they find kind of the antidote to that in Serie A um, to me it, it would be a big surprise if Inter doesn't win the title at this point in a row that I already said it yes it would be the 20th and I hate it but you know so be it um, the only thing in this game that Inter has to be blamed is that they didn't score a second and always kept kind of Torino in play there were minor chances but in, in the end the runaway I think Alexis Sanchez even hit the outside of the post, it got to say. I did watch uh, a bit of Verona against Fiorentina. Uh, gotta say, I expect a little bit more from the game because, especially, that Fiorentina is kind of now this new fun team that everyone wants to watch, and uh, Verona also. But it was kind of a so I mean, the La Lasagna gave them an early lead. I had the feeling that Verona was slightly the more, I don't want to say mature team, but you know, a little bit uh, more cohesive team. Whereas Fiorentina uh, had a little bit more trouble, uh, which came as a surprise, surprise to me. They get uh, the equalizer very, very late through Castrovilli. But then I also had the feeling that it was more Verona pushing for the win than Fiorentina. So yeah, uh, was a weird game overall. I expected more. Anything, yeah, also uh, considering the early exchange, the, the result between Empoli and Milan might have been also considered weird, but that was almost what I expected. When, I know when they, uh, when, when I saw the last two fixtures uh, ahead of the Christmas break, I said, Nap, Napoli home, they probably lose, and then Empoli away, they might actually win, win it. So it's three points. Now, I knew that this Empoli game, and I said before, is a tricky one because Empoli is not a bad team, uh, they play. They uh, they play well and they have given loads of trouble to many other teams already. However, yesterday you could see, and a uh, funny thing is, I mean, the two cap captains were two Romagnolis. I assume they're brothers, although they don't look that much alike, to, to be honest, with uh, Alessio Romagnoli, the Milan captain, being the younger one. Uh, I have to say that at the beginning I thought Amp Ampoli was more dangerous, but it was a fun up and down game throughout. And Cassia gave Milan the lead almost uh, a little bit against the run of playing the 12th to 12th, 12th minute, but they didn't keep. And I thought this might stay as they said, but they couldn't hold on to, to, to the lead because by Rami the 18th already with a great shot from outside the box equalized. And then I think up until like the 30th, Empoli had a little bit more of the game, and Milan really were kind of struggling. I mean, there were a few saves from Mignon in there uh, where he really needed to stretch himself. However, then uh, Salome plays a really nice pass into Cassier, who takes a shot kind of unexpectedly goes through the legs of, of the goalkeeper at the time. And I think Milan had already exerting more control of, of the game. But I thought the, the lead at the halftime was a little bit uh, lucky, but they could have even doubled it a little bit uh, later on to, 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 to the end of the half and at the beginning of the second half. But then Barami again, I think, hits the woodwork. Uh, but that was then all more or less that Empoli could come up with and so it is a Florenzi free kick, first goal I think for Milan, for uh, Florenzi uh, that sets Milan on, 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 on the way, it was another one of those, I mean, it's the fourth direct free kick uh, that Milan scored and that is, you know, we had a great free kick take, take uh, Giorgio Noglu who barely ever scored one, I think one I can remember and now they score already four this season, uh, two by Slatom. I think one by Tonali and now Florenzi. Really, really well uh, taken around the wall. And, you know, you had another, again, the, the their own wall to kind of block the goalie. And it was very well taken because it went exactly in the corner where the goalkeeper can't can do much except tell the wall to go a little bit further uh, to the right. And then uh, with a 4-1 through Hernandez, uh, just a few mini minutes later, where actually it probably could have been a penalty before, but then because there's the ball on Hernandez, Hernandez wanted to side kick it. Uh, held back and then the, you see the ball fall, falling on the Empoli player so it would have been a penalty Milan uh, but it falls exactly in front of his feet and he puts it in 4-1 done and done I thought yeah even good for the goal difference unfortunately um, <laughs> 
My favorite player at the moment, Bakayoko, calms down and also cannot keep his arms to himself. Gives a penalty that Pinamonti can convert. And there was a little bit, a teeny bit of nervousness, but I thought that Milan overall got it over the line rather safe. Uh, I, I would have wished that it was a three goal win, but yeah. As I said, win to close out uh, the year. Uh, very happy with that one. Cannot really complain. The only thing I gotta uh, say that this little blip now after this international, the last international break is what uh, has me a little bit annoyed. But you know, Inter also needs to probably go through a blip still. Maybe, 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 maybe not. Uh, another team that had a blip was of course Napoli and they keep continuing. I think a third home loss in, 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 in a row. An own goal by uh, Juan Jesus. Basically, it does, undoes all the good work that they got with the admittedly a little bit lucky win at San Zero against Milan. Admittedly, yeah. Maybe. I, I still, yeah, it probably was a deserved win overall. People try to con convince me of that. Uh, Napoli scored, as I say, I mean, the first half was uh, atrocious. Spezia uh, didn't, wasn't even that undeserved. However, in the second half, I mean, they scored two goals, both of which uh, one is ruled out for offside in, in, in build, the other one by a push for Petania. Okay, gotta take it. Uh, they had many, many chances, but they cannot co convert. And they, uh, you know, I, I do not wish really ill will to Napoli, but I also felt a little bit while well, well, watching it. Yeah, this is exactly what happened uh, just uh, this weekend, where you run after a deficit and you cannot convert. But you know. The chances of Napoli were much better than the chances the Milan had against Napoli. But yeah, a uh, huge loss for Napoli. As I said, the third home loss in a row. Uh, yes, injuries playing a big part in that one as well. And I guess that win basically sends Napoli out of the title race. We'll come back after the break with a pretty interesting round. I mean, there are two big games in there. Uh, with Milan against Roma at 6.30. I don't like necessarily the early kickoff. And then Juve Napoli, another big one. Um, I think a sleeper game is Atalanta against Torino because uh, that's the opponent Atalanta often likes to score loads of goals. Bologna against Inter might also be a sleeper there as well. But, you know, it's all about Milan, Roma and Juve Napoli. I gotta say, and yeah, to close it out, I've given out a halfway table, although we have one match that has not, no, not been played, and you see it's all in the four points ahead of Milan, three points ahead, ahead of Napoli. Uh, Milan keeping themselves just about in the title race. Uh, as for Champ, Champions League, the top four are still favored, but you see Juve Sand with 55%. Per percent. This was down to 20 not too long ago, so uh, that goes rather well too. Uh, there have been quite a few changes in midfield uh, where it's rather tight, but I think um, Lazio, we have eight teams, Lazio is uh, that, that, that are fighting for seven spots in Europe. Lazio is kind of the last, the last one there. Then we have a broad midfield, and I would say with Venezia, we start the relegation zone. Um, Venezia still outside and Spezia having a good cushion. The last three are the ones to be worried about, but Cagliari was in such trouble uh, earlier, uh, early in the season last year as well. And then they made the great escape. So let's see, Salernitana, I think they will go down and it will be a bad points total as, as well. I mean, uh, the Ultras are even wanting that they are getting kicked out of the league to get because they couldn't get rid of Lotito and Serie A doesn't want to kick out the team out of the league. Yeah, uh, It's a mess and now with the COVID. Let's see where this will go. Please drop a line below and let, let me know what you thought about this last round before Christmas and where Serie A will be going from here out. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.